Awesome. Good morning and welcome to the MediaSpeaks.com live Saturday show. I'm D. Lake for Prez, David Lake. Thank you for joining us. I'm joined today by the technician on a mission, Kyle Phillips. How are you doing today, D. Lake? Pretty good, KP, man. Hey, uh, what's going on with that t-shirt, man? You look like Freddy Krueger or something. I'm the Sandman. Sandman. It's my oh, Sandman. Oh, yeah, that's Sandman. Shirt. Dude, do you think that turning into sand would be a cool power? No. It sounds really painful. Yeah, unless there's a big giant dump truck full of sand, like, right there, and then you could... Spider like, it doesn't... Three, it like, just doesn't sound comfortable. Like, yeah. turning from human being into sand, it feels like it would be, like... Oh, yeah. Eek. Sounds like, kind of scratchy. Like, getting your tooth drilled. Yeah. Have, uh, welcome also to the show, Sam Ganji of The Correct View. Sam! Greetings, unsettled souls. It is wonderful to be here. <laughs> and Sam, have you ever had sand in your sneakers? That is better than sand in the mouth. I, 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 will, <laughs> I, I will say that the, there, there is a lot more to be said about the beauty of romance of being on a beach than when you actually get to do it. It's been said by other people, too. It is very true. Oh, yeah. I've had, uh, I, I don't know if you're talking about intimate experiences on a beach, but I've been there. Yeah, in the sand, <laughs> definitely. Uh, you got to have, like, extra layers of blankets. All right, everyone. Welcome to the show. We're going to get into the news and headlines uh, on today's live Saturday show. Right, guys? More than ready. I, I Like you said, this has been the week. We've been cranking them out nonstop. We've been posting a lot of stuff uh, onto our Facebook, The Media Speaks on Facebook. Uh, you can find us at Twitter by just looking up The Media Speaks. Um, we've been joined several times by Matt Winklejohn of Resist the Tyranny. Kyle, uh, you want to shoot a link to Matt and see if we can get him on today? Uh, we're waiting for Anthony Court of The Core Report to join us. He's going to his... Uh, uh, some sort of remote location. We never really know where Court's at. He's he's like a robot. He's a cyborg Terminator from the future. Uh, Sam, what are some of the big top headlines that you've been covering uh, this this past week? Go ahead. Uh, one of the things um, that have really really frustrated me to no end was what I actually ended up giving uh, the much revered Dunce Cap of the Month award to. Uh, that was Abercrombie and Fitch. Let's forget about whether or not we have a moral right here. Like, I, I, for those of you that don't know, they Sam, were. Uh, Sam, I, I watched your report. Do you think that Kyle and I could shop at uh, at the Abercrombie and Fitch, or do you think we should uh, put on goth makeup and uh, and uh, some kind of goth costumes and and roll with you uh, in the Abercrombie like vampires? Should we do that? I, I don't think any of us are so round that we couldn't shop there, but would we want to? No, we should definitely goth out and shop there. For those of you that don't oh, could know, could Lestat I, shop there? Could well, Lestat well, wait. and uh, interview it's, with the vampire? Could they? Should I, I think could what he bothered shop me there? the most was that even you know let, let, let's just forget about the, the stupidity of what they said of not wanting fat or unattractive people in their store. Think about the marketing idea, like what what the, the idea of what that is actually done or what that's created. It's made a backlash of everyone who has, you know, maybe you're shopping with that fat friend. Well, guess what? Now she doesn't want to go to the store, so neither one of you are going to go, and you're going to say, yeah. That oh yeah, they want to embarrass uh, fat people right out of their store, so only the good, sexy looking people can be there. That that sounds dunce-worthy to me. Sickening, I was, right? I was utterly sickened, and yeah, uh, that. so that. yes, that, that that was my recent one. Kyle, what's your what's your most recent? My, I'm sorry, my most recent one. I was just looking up. I was just gonna throw in. I'm pretty oh, sure isn't a, isn't Abercrombie and Fitch and Hot Topic like owned by the same company? I've heard that. Oh, Is I that did accurate? not know that because I was telling people we were gonna get all gossed <clears> out and go to Spencer's and Hot Topic to spend money. But for viewers, <laughs> I think they're the same company. I, I'm not a close, I don't know if they're so associated. So someone leaves a comment thinking yeah. I'm an idiot. When it comes to that fashion stuff, I am an idiot. I'm sitting here wearing an ogre T-shirt. But so, what was the know, question? Yeah. What was my last what? Article. Uh, the last article that I wrote or I posted? Oh, uh, I guess it should be posted. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure. I wrote one a while ago. I have, Sam, I have one that, that... Don't you think that a lot of people could defend uh, that guy's comments as just, like, honesty in marketing? Like, he's like, look, I'm being honest about the way that we market our product. We market to slim, sexy people. And, like, when fat, ugly people come into the store, we, we don't really like that. I mean, is that honesty in marketing? And, like, we're going to try to appeal to people with 
six packs and, and, and Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise hair. Do you think there's people out there who, when they heard that, they're like, well, I'm going to go to Abercrombie more often. I know I won't run I'm into sure any fat are. fucks. Like, do you yeah. think there's people who like that? Uh, to some degree, but I think even uh, if, if you wanted to do what D-Lake had mentioned, you can do something, say, you know, well, we, we normally have certain sizes that we, uh, we know that we market to because those tend to be the most popular, those tend to be yeah. the most frequent shoppers I mean, in our yeah. store. So you're saying they should have been politically correct. <laughs> I, I, I'm saying that it, oh, I yeah. think if you are a politician, political correctness becomes something of a, uh, a burden. What if, if they open are, up an ad? If Abitra? you own a business, though, I think uh, political correctness almost becomes part of your job description. What if they I open up the next pads. to every Abercrombie and Fitch, they open an Abercrombie and Fat? And it's like the bigger well, sizes of yeah, that separate they, they store. Could, and it's like fats yeah. only, skinnies only. Yeah, I mean, if this, this guy is a marketing genius, he he's already thought of that. Because the thing is, like, I mean, if you go into Amber Crombie and Fitch, and uh, your size not. thirty, you're thirty eight, but that's like, or maybe maybe your size forty waist, and they they don't have that. They stop at thirty eight. That's thirty eight's big enough. I just make it, D. Like I just make it. I'm like a 36, 38. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe there. You walk in there with your goth, your goth, uh, your full passing time regalia, and they're gonna be like, "Uh, sir, come over here." Like, like you have a great body type. They're gonna be like, "Oh, sir, here. Let's let's do a let's do a Amber Crombie makeover." Yeah, that's what I was thinking. They. You do. called us dunces and sent us that letter. We're gonna send you a bunch of product and, and make you wear our make you wear our uh, clothing. You. Sir, you're going to be like Kramer on Seinfeld. Like, they'll just put you in the ad like uh, Calvin Klein. That's what I assume happens to Sam every time he walks into a mall is, like, everybody's trying to make him over, and they're trying to dance while they do it. And he's like, I'm just trying to get to Spencer's. They're, they're, he's just like everyone else. They're trying to pedal their cell phones. Like, everything that's in the middle. Hey, how much you pay them on? Everything, guys, everything that's in the middle. Okay, there's all the stores lining any kind of mall, right? It's all the stuff that's in the middle. You know the little huts in the middle of them all mm -hmm. that aren't the storefronts. Those guys are like Those demons, dude. Those guys are dude. the guys that are like, come here. They're sharks yeah. in the middle. Do you ever have yeah. them? It's like every, walk through a mall and have like a like a Jack and Coke inside of a coffee mug and drink every time a guy asks you how much you're paying monthly on your cell phone bill. Like, oh, yeah. I, I had a friend that worked at one of those. They get like 8% or something. That's all what they if get. You had that? What if you had that in your coffee uh, inside an airport when they come around with their test strips and they're testing for bombs and people's coffee already bought past the security clearance and they're like, uh, some, it looks like someone might have slipped some Jack Daniels into this. Uh, we need to take that up scone with that immediately or Kahlua or Bailey's or something. That's horrible because everybody likes to bring alcohol onto a plane in a coffee mug. Who it's doesn't just... fly? It? Who does? <laughs> <laughs> it's just what you do. Hey, hey, check out one quick, quick story. When uh, my sister and I were young children, uh, my parents used to just put us on a plane, like, go to American Airlines, get on this plane, the stewardesses will take you there, everything will be great, get on the plane, and fly all the way across the country to the other side and see your grandfather, stay with him, he worked at a camp, a YMCA camp, and you'll be in cabins and uh, do the whole camp thing all summer. Meanwhile, me and your mom will have the best time of our lives while you got while you kids are gone. So yeah, go for it. Well, this one time, I mean, and we used to get like uh, pins and uh, with the uh, wings for flying on American Airlines, and the stewardesses yeah. were all hot, and the captains look all really sharp dressed, like, and uh, they had their own security there at the airport. They had ashtrays, and they had a contest on the plane uh, to guess the elevation. And the winner would get a mini pack full of alcohols. What? My sister, six years old, guesses the uh, elevation correctly, wins the contest on the airplane, American Airlines, gets the, uh, the, well, they're like, it's a little kid. And these two little kids are in the kids section, like traveling by themselves. Like, and you can't you know, give them a the big thing. The and everyone's keeping an eye on us, right? They're like, but you guys guessed correctly and you won the, uh, Al the alcoholic beverages. 
we're like, well, we're going to go visit our grandfather, and we'll just hand him right over to him. We're like six and eight years old. They did and not they, give him to you. They totally did. And we, we got off the plane, and they, they were with us, and we said, here, check it out. We won. And he was like, holy shit. My grandfather was like, hell yeah. Good job, kids. Hoo-ha. <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to summer. Let's go to summer camp. He was the cook there at the camp. While we're welcoming people, welcome Matt Winklejohn from Resist the Tyranny. There he is, Matt. Yay. Thanks for listening to my story. Matt Winklejohn of ResistTheTyranny.com. How you doing, guys? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was doing that. We, we were just covering our, our uh, top headline. The things that we felt were the top headlines this past week on, like, Facebook. We like we. like I would say we were posting a lot of articles. I posted that... Uh, 25 reasons that the military uh, under Obama is just shameful and despicable and garbage and like bad for everybody and all the suicides and like Matt, uh, what what were some of the articles you were posting? What about that five-year-old and his cap gun? What's what what's up with that? Oh yeah, I think we all read that one, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that five. You know, I get so tired of that. I actually am making a video of my son, my 12-year-old son. Uh, I'm gonna make two of them. I'm gonna make one with uh, him and his his Nerf guns and and cap guns, and then I'm gonna take him to the range and have him shoot my real guns. And the title's gonna be "He Knows the Difference," and uh, and uh, you know See, my you my know, my, my ode to the zero tolerance policy that makes no sense. Shocking child abuse! Oh my God, how could you do such a thing? I know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna email it to every left wing leftist piece of crap <laughs> website I can think of, and wait for CPS to knock on my door. To protect his <laughs> identity, I think that you should put a beard on him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that out. five year old. I'm telling you what that uh, that story. I mean, they scared that kid so bad he actually peed his pants all for a cap gun on a school bus that he was excited to show his friends. I I. Totally, I actually did that totally when I was excited. in elementary school. I yeah, did that. I brought, yeah, Kyle, uh, please I, go ahead. Let's all attest to how we all did the same exact thing. When we were yeah, kids. Go ahead. I brought. I actually. All right, I have two stories. One, when I was in elementary school, I totally got a cap gun that was like the most realistic looking revolver ever. Like you popped it open, you could pull out the round and everything. Nice. Really, really cool. And I brought it to school to show my buddy. And as I'm walking into the building, one of like the secretaries in the office that we had to walk past on the way in is like, uh, uh. She's like you can't have that and she took it and she's like get it back after school and don't bring it back here i was like okay and then later at that same school when i was a freshman in high school i had a girlfriend who was in eighth grade at that middle school still and she wanted to borrow my bb gun and i like gave it to her like when she got out of school and she put it in her backpack and took it home and like somehow somebody found out and it was like i brought a bb gun on school property technically but it was like i literally gave it to her and she like took it home so I got suspended for like two days because of that, but it's like now I would have been expelled and arrested. Yeah, that's international arms dealing. It, pretty much. I used to carry a knife to school. You know, I mean, when when I, when I went to school, uh, and, and it was it was it was out in the county, so it's not like it was inside the city. But we used to have kids they, they hunted. They the the seniors and juniors and ones who could who could drive had shotguns in their back windows. You we know? had a kid who got his he got his truck torn apart by the police because the dogs barked at it on their random dog sniffing day and it was because there were shotgun shells on the <clears throat> like underneath his seat because he shared his truck with his dad and his brother and they had all gone hunting like two weekends prior and I guess some shotgun shells slipped under the seat he didn't even know they were there they tore his truck apart and like destroyed it uh, Sam, what were some of the wild and crazy things you did as a youngster that you would totally get cracked down on for nowadays? Uh, well, you, you might have gotten cracked down for it then, but I live. I grew up where I still live in Canton, Ohio, and uh, it, it, when the first eight, eight or nine years of my life, it was a really good area. And then by the time I got to be around 10 or 11, it was a perfectly good place to die. And we all, everybody had some kind of weapon on them. And I've got news for Timken and McKinley, which are the two schools that are in Canton. If you think that some of the uh, hood rats that go to that school of all varieties do not have weapons of all varieties still, you're crazy. I mean, 
what they've done is made it so that people that might carry some kind of uh, defense. When I went to school, and I, I think Matt will understand this too, the fact that you didn't really know if the kid beside you had a knife, which when you were 14 was, you know, the, 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 the ultimate weapon, um, unless, you know, you were gangbanging or something, it was significant. You tended to leave other people alone a little more. Now, I mean, now their bully kids are getting bullied by other kids with weapons, and they have nothing. That's what they've done. They haven't made it any yeah. safer. I got I got arrested when I was like 13 <clears throat> because these kids cut, cornered me. This is in McHenry, a wonderful neighborhood. They they cornered me and they they thought that I was like talking shit about them or something. And I like didn't even know these kids. I'd like never met them before. I met them once earlier where they were like saying the same shit and I told them I was like I don't even know you. I don't know what you're talking about. But anyways, they corner me, three of them and they have box cutters and they're pretty much saying like we're going to slit your fucking throat and blah blah blah. And I was like 13 and these kids were like 16. I fucking pulled out a knife and I was like step back or I will fucking gut you. And like then like the cops got called by people on the property and we all got arrested, but it's like hey, I didn't get cut by a box cutter that day. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, better jail than the morgue in the hospital, my friend. I had to do some community service, but it's like I didn't get stabbed either. So you know, that, that's a perfect example of the conceal and carry and self defense laws. You know, is is that you know you had whether you were thirteen or not, you had a a, a weapon on you, mm -hmm. and you lived through that day because you had a weapon on you. I've always said about guns, that, you know that. The, the first time you need a gun and don't have one is the last time you ever need one. And that's, yeah. a, that's the same thing. That's the same situation you got going there. Well, great. We're talking about guns, and we're just joined now by Anthony Court of the Court Report and the Media Speaks.com. Anthony, I see that you're in a secure location. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine. Uh, my original spot uh, more or less was just occupied. That's all I can say. <laughs> you should you should start bringing like fold up chairs that you can put on this like next to wherever you're at and like put like a sign in your window that yeah. says live show. See if says, like you want to join us live like yeah overhead <laughs> tent with a couch <laughs> and uh, join me now desk and couch like a. Uh, hey, yeah, well, there, like, there's a radio host right there. There, the there there's there's a radio host that, that does a live show at a cigar shop once a week. Maybe I, maybe I, I could meet him there or fill him in on one of the days. I think that's fill actually a genius idea. What if I go to yeah. like a random public park on a beautiful sunny day and set up a little tiny gazebo and a table and I put up a sign that just says like, yeah. join me live and there's like a microphone and Kyle. an empty chair next oh, to me. Oh, Kyle, this is a brilliant <laughs> idea. All we need is a truck, a desk, uh, like a some sort of tent gazebo set up. Uh, you and know, now, like a wireless use, internet connection. Something that's easily buildable. Like I have friends that. We know build, we, like, we can set up Disney Disneyland and everything. We can yeah. set up Disneyland like characters at the North Korean border, like a little mini Disneyland. Oh yeah. I can just sit there. Once like, we start if... getting into Disneyland status, people start putting ice bombs and trash cans, and and, and we have to call in the DHS. And yeah, the and then they thing. end up working there, and then it's just some dumbass kid that's twenty two just going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so, uh, uh, Court, we started the show today talking about uh, posts and stuff that we uh, have been posting on online, you know, posting to our Facebooks, posting to our website, uh, reports that we've been doing, like, we've all been cranking it out, Correct Views is bringing it, Resist the Tyranny is bringing it, D-Lake, I put out a report this week, it's been a little while for me, I've uh, been pumping up the live shows, but our live shows are getting a ton of views, you know, and uh, Kyle's getting better and better at naming them. We're all getting better at pumping up our algorithm, and uh, I know Matt was algorithm. a little concerned about his ratings recently, but uh, but Court, why don't you talk a little bit more about uh, guns and all this guns in California talk lately, because that's, oh, okay. that's a headline I see you're posting a lot about. Yeah, well, I mean, if you haven't heard, uh, it was, you know, uh, Matt Winklejohn reported on this with Resistant Tyranny, and thank you, Matt. Uh but basically, it's the proposed gun controls, and in California, it's up to I think seven to twelve bills. Um, and I, I posted an article called "Because uh, I live in the Valley of California," um, that says Valley dealers propose gun controls laws unfair, and that's from the Fresno Bee. And it goes on to say that the strict gun control laws moving through the California legislature will penalize law-abiding citizens just like you and I anybody watching this 
and do nothing to stop criminals from getting the weapons, just like we always say here on the show. Um, and then a, a gun, gun shop owner goes on to say, bad guys don't play by the rules, so none of these laws will keep them from getting guns and ammo. And, and she couldn't be more correct. That's Sharon Mayfield of Gilmay Guns, and that's in northwestern Fresno. Uh, so go ahead and check them out. Um, on Wednesday, the lawmakers, the Democratic lawmakers, the treasonous bastards, I'll call them, uh, advanced a package of bills that would tighten the state's regulation of the firearm requirements. Uh, but my biggest concern is they're putting background checks on, just like they said, law-abiding citizens for ammunition purchases. Not only that, they're trying to completely outlaw and criminalize any rifle that has a detachable magazine, which is complete and utter nonsense. Mm -hmm. I bet Matt Winklejohn has a few words to say about that. Um, but before I get to you, Matt, on that, uh, I, I, something I said on the Resist Tyranny Live when this first came out was, if you have a bear, if you have a bear charging at you, you want more than one round because they have a very thick skin and skull. And it, if you got, if you got something like that chasing chasing you down or uh, charging at you charging at you or your loved ones, I'm not even talking about the original purpose of the Second Amendment. Sure, it's for things yeah. like that, but uh, I digress. Eight hundred thousand pounds. Their tyranny is still tyranny. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You need a few rounds. Go ahead. Down. I've been saying to anyone that to anyone that'll listen forever, when flash mobs begin to leave malls and start going towards uh, houses, people will realize why you need more than what? What is it? Uh, Matt, ten rounds they want to give us. Yeah, they want to limit all magazines to ten rounds, but then they want to get rid of the magazines that really count, which okay, are in the uh, court. You have, you, if, you've got oh. you've got a flash mob coming at your house. How many rounds you want, court? I, I want, want gallon, 30 plus man. at least. <laughs> right. I, I want yeah, 30 plus. Well, let me uh, Matt, would it be true that yeah. if you don't go shooting a lot, you're more likely to need that many bullets in the event that a flash mob comes at your house? Exactly. Let's ask Matt. Matt, I know you. I, I can see you're patiently listening and uh, tuning in to everything that's going on here. For those of you that don't know, he's a gun man. Uh, court was uh, threw out a couple questions to you there if you want to respond to those. And also, uh, how do you feel about Sam's uh, topic, uh, the flash mobs? And, and what kind of ammo would you need for that? Well, you know, and, and yeah, he, uh, Court's right about, you know, what the stuff in California and what they want to do. And they're completely ridiculous. I mean, it, it the... Um, the FBI, FBI statistics is if you ever need to defend yourself, you have a 60% chance of it being more than one assailant. And I dare anybody I know to tell me that they are 100% accurate with every shot that comes out of their gun uh, in a high-stress situation. I don't know anybody like that. I've been shooting since I was 8 years old. I've been training with guns also. There's a difference between target shooting and training. And, and high stress, your fingers turn to flippers, and yeah. you might even pee your pants like a well, five-year-old. Oh, it's right. not a manly thing; ahead. it happens to everybody. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, what I think, what I to compare to that, Matt, when I take my girlfriend to the gun range, and she starts shooting, and the other shooters uh, interrupt her uh, her concentration, I say, you know, she says that messes her up. I said, that's good. You want to hear that because you want to be able to endure the sounds of gunfire in case you. you the other people that are attacking you have unless them, you're fighting Brutus, right? like yeah, unless yeah. you're yeah, and, but unless but, yeah. you're just mowing people down, like no, I'm just kidding. I mean, <laughs> your standard yeah, hunting totally. rifle, your standard hunting rifle, unless you're dealing with like a single shot bolt action, has a detachable magazine. So this ridiculous law that California wants to pass uh, is is going to ban your standard 308 Grandpa's hunting rifle. And, and and forget about AR-15s and AK-47s and all that. You know, I mean, we're talking your standard Woodstock, you know, five-shot, three-shot, whatever, hunting rifle. And they want to ban that. Even though it's less than 10 rounds, it has a detachable magazine. Um, and then as far as what... Uh, 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 what Sam was saying with the flash mobs, that goes back to my FBI statistic. You know, you have a 60% chance of having to defend yourself against more than one assailant. And so, um, you know, just to, to, to even think that six shots, I, you know, I've never met anybody that's been in a gunfight. I've never met a soldier or cop that said that they want less ammo. Yeah, that's Not why, why I like... You know, less capacity, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, I 
I, I'm not a good enough shot that I that I can say, give me a little ammo. That's I'm gonna get myself to killed if I do that. Well, like, look at like if you ever watch movies that like take place with action heroes in like the Wild West or like the single action like time you know era. They always have like like Wild Wild West or like uh, the Mummy. When they're like dealing with revolvers, they always have like like 16 of them, eight on each side, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it sounds as pretty, you get like four barrels, like double barrels, like so you, you don't have to reload like real yeah, quickly. Yeah, like Laura um, Croft, she's you got know, they the reloaders like on the back real quick, two guns, you know? But like old yeah, school but they revolvers, they swords, and you know what time? Yeah, in those older battles, they had not, they used the, the bayonets and the swords and stuff, and yeah, you know, as talking about swords, I'm going to throw a little plug out to BudKCatalog.com with the zombie line on MeSpeaks.com. I was actually checking out some of their swords. They have some pretty sick swords on there. A katana for 130. Okay, Court. Uh, 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 shopping katana and prices chop there. Through, uh, uh, chop, 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 chop. Robo chop. Uh, Court. Well, you, I think you started what, out really well with your connection, and uh, I'm trying to close all my windows. I don't know if I'm messing it up. Here. I think I think what Court was trying to say is that on the website, if you go, uh, if you scroll down a little bit, there's this uh, ad that takes you to Zombie Gear, and that takes you to Bud K's, which is a really awesome website. I've bought many things from them. I've had buddies buy sword canes. I've bought a few knives from them. Um, I bought some tasers from them, or stun guns, I should say. Some really, really nice stun guns. <clears throat> and if you follow this, it takes yeah, you to, like, some guns, of the... Kyle? Yeah, I've had a few stun guns. They uh, Stun guns tend to break really easily, and that's not a problem they hurt. with Bud, Bud K's. They do. They hurt like a motherfucker. And I used them more on myself than anything else. Because You've I been like... stunned, huh, Matt? You have to, but check it out. They got the Life Straw at Bud K's, which is like a really awesome product. They got all these sweet, like zombie specific things, which I know people like. Court, uh, Court wants specific to zombie things. Kyle, to kill zombies uh, with. Matt, when you guys were uh, trying this on yourselves, uh, what part of your body were, were you putting this on? The leg for me. I do it on my calf, and it hurts. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> okay. Here, let me see. Uh, if I, I got one. I got stunned in the back of the neck while Ow. I was driving. <laughs> Stunned in the back of the neck while you were driving? Yeah, somebody thought it'd be funny. Oh, how? Ha, ha, ha. They didn't, had, they didn't uh, care uh, about their uh, own lives, uh, apparently, uh, when they were in the back seat. <laughs> I had one yeah. of these things, and this thing's a novelty. This was my first stun gun. These things are a novelty. 100,000 volts is a joke. The second one that I bought was a million volts, and that thing, that thing knocked you back. This thing is like I could hold this on my arm all day and night but it's a it's like enough like if you're out on the street like uh an assailant isn't going to stick around to figure out how many volts it is they're going to feel a little bit of a shock and they're going to like leave you alone hopefully. well Matt what if a 5 year old brought a uh new uh stunner taser to uh, elementary school would that be wrong Oh, they'd probably be accosted, sent to prison, and and who knows what other thing. I mean, I mean that's that, got to be much uh, worse than a cap gun that just makes a little noise. It, it is, and 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 no, and do I think that five year olds need to be taking stun guns to school? No, but a cap gun. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, where did you get that? On. A cap gun with a big orange tip, and it's just like pack, pack, pack. Like or, uh, tap 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 whatever you know, you know cap, cap, that cap. that one the little seven year old or six year old girl that took a Hello Kitty bubble gun oh the to bubbles school, and yeah. it, she bubbles. is she was she was right she was classified as a terroristic threat I mean that's insane it's a Hello Kitty hey what about gun. the kid we report we reported on this before um it's it's in the big uh, laundry list of stuff we had. Or, 25 reasons you should homeschool your children. But uh, the kid who dropped $5 and was put it in, uh, they brought him to the police station. His mother see him at first, and he was handcuffed to the wall, like where they put the crackheads in off the street. And it was like a, it looked like he was scummy. five years old. It was not like a clean cut, like, you know, like introduction. And he, he didn't even do it. Station. It looked like a nasty place to be handcuffed. Yeah. It looked disgusting, right, guys? And what the hell was yeah. he doing there? Oh, well, we have to immediately take seven-year-olds to jail. That's, that's where seven-year-olds belong. Yeah. I guess. There's no way the teachers or the principal could deal with all that stuff. 
Well, no do you way. remember the day when, like, I was talking to a buddy of mine a little while ago, and he's a little bit older than me. He's in a, he's about 30. I'm glad my elementary school uh, experiences didn't make the national news. Go well, ahead, Kyle. He was talking about when he was in school before, like, Photoshop class and, you know, like, graphics class and stuff, there was, like, old school, like, printing class, and they had, like, the old, like, you spin it, and it, like, makes, like, copies of shit. I don't know exactly how those old-fashioned ones work. But he was taking it with a buddy, and they thought of the idea, like, why don't we make a dollar with this thing? And so they, like, made a dollar bill, and they got it the exact color and everything, and they made it look like a really, really good dollar. Teacher comes over, and he looks at it, and they're like, what are you doing? They're like, well, we thought, like, couldn't we make, like, a dollar? And the teacher grabbed it, crumpled it up, looked at both of them, and said, don't ever do that again. That's counterfeiting. And that you know was what? it. That no. was it. You know, yeah, he's like, it's counterfeiting. Yeah. You're gonna, you can be arrested for that. that. That's what teachers the teachers don't want to do it anymore. They want to send you to the principal and put you in jail. <laughs> it's but sad, you know what? What's, what's even sadder is that that's not illegal. It's only illegal to print money with intent to distribute. But here's the thing: is a teach from a teacher. So you're telling me, Sam? So you're telling me, Sam? I could print money. <laughs> well, you're and... telling him, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling. Uh, no, sorry, but like. The, are your, the thing are your is, guys like, voices are you guys voices recovered yet to to do uh, some uh, Jesse and uh, Alex impressions today? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Something, Something told me D Lake wanted some impressions today. So what you're yeah. telling me, D Lake, <laughs> is you want us to? <laughs> oh, I can't do it anymore. What? I think I thrashed my voice up. Matt was oh, doing uh, Doctor Claw impressions the other day, or whatever. Uh, Matt Claw, are you there? I'm here. I guess is the, not. Is the, is the claw there? Uh, <coughs> sorry, I was I was eating something. Uh oh. Oh, you You're motherfucker! Cat. No. <laughs> hey, can I ask you guys a kind of relevant question? Uh, does anybody know You're anything good or bad me. about e-cigarettes? I haven't found anything to say they're terrible, and I'm trying to. Quit. Nah, that'll, that'll uh, be bad for you. I've heard if you have a bad stay away from those. I would just. They still contain nicotine. They still well, yeah. contain nicotine, but they don't have the other harmful chemicals. And actually, my friend actually used it to quit and successfully. Yeah, but isn't sodium glycol a carcinogen, sir? And isn't that the liquid inside of these things? Well, yeah, I'm not denying it has any carcinogens or okay. not, or it, uh, nicotine's the the worst thing for you almost in a I'm cigarette. I'm playing devil's advocate as I'm the guy sitting here who just bought one, but. <laughs> No, I think I'm, yeah, I'm gonna try. Hey, why don't I you just want to make sure there's no purple in there. No looking. I say do it. I say why do it halfway? Just smoke the real ones. I know, but <laughs> I, I figured this. You're is saying like it's not manly off, to quit. smoke the e-cigs? I'm agreeing with him. Yes, that's true. Fact. <laughs> Courtney Love did a commercial okay. for the blue or whatever. Actually, oh yeah. Uh, you like the guy rubbing his face as he smokes it, walking down the beach? Yeah, I know the guy you're talking about. I'm trying to get his like. Because that's because that's out. exactly what the people do when they smoke. They they wear a suit and they they pop up the top uh, button and they walk around the beach smoking an e-cig. That's uh, that, that's exactly how. If it I lived in like San Diego or like California, like you guys, that's what I would do. We don't have what? these. Awesome yeah, and then he beaches. would he would talk to himself about how yeah, great the e cig was, and they wouldn't have a camera crew there. People would be like, "Who is that guy? He's here every morning, right around the time the sun comes up." We're trying Guys, to. Guys, can I tell you moment. something? That guy was that on guy something. Was What's that? <laughs> this my is enough talk about that guy. <laughs> my my problem with it is that you don't see the smoke come out. It's like vaporizer, and like I don't know if you guys have ever messed. What's with a like vaporizer? A volcano vaporizer. Yeah. <laughs> But those cigarettes no, are like vapor. What's I mean, that? I've never heard of that. <laughs> you never heard of a vaporizer? What well, what is a vaporizer? Explain that, that to me. Have you I've ever seen an it. oxygen mask? Have you ever watched a movie or read a book? No, I... no, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know somebody who had a volcano, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do. I, uh, but but uh, my problem my problem with those things is you don't see the smoke coming out. When you find yeah. when you release it, like you don't believe it. 
There's something about me that, seeing a big giant cloud that lets me know that, whoa, that was a big hit, you know? Yeah, like I just smoked something. I know what happened. I'm like, it's uh, <laughs> Yeah, <magic>. those vaporizers, <laughs> but you keep hitting it and it's all invisible and you're like, what's going on? And then you're totally baked. My problem is you take one puff and it's strong. You take another puff and it's like nothing. And it's like, I'm addicted to the feeling in my throat. It's an awesome, like as gross that sounds like that kick that you get when you like take the I'm addicted yeah. to the visual That's what sensation I'm of the smoke, cloud of smoke. I like clouds of smoke. Yeah. Coming so out of my like, body. I don't know neither I like of us are satisfied by these things at all. It'll light up a cigarette. This, right, conver well, this conversation went no. a totally different direction, didn't it? Can we carry on with the real news? No, Matt, all what right. are your top headlines on resistatyranny.com? And please involve Sam, who's jumping in and out and being real quiet. Go ahead, guys. Well, hey, I have something I can say really quickly to fill fill some space here. Fill, give, give everybody a chance to fill their mind with something good to come back with is we got to we got to try and make some money here. Nobody's saying that we will. Nobody's pressuring you to do anything, but if you do like shows, <clears throat> the shows that we do, you like the reports, you like the videos, then one way that you can support us is by going to the home page and you can scroll down a little bit and right here on the right side you can click the zombie gear ad and that takes you to budkays.com. Bud Case has got knives, they got swords, they got ninja weapons, they have hunting and shooting stuff, they don't have real guns, but they have like really cool pellet guns, camping and survival. Stars? So, and they have, they have a demonstration oh, yeah. for every knife and, and how they, how it, how Yeah, and they have it awesome reviews, like their customers are really good about writing reviews, so you know like if what you're getting is good and like they're really honest about it. They got everything, blowguns, spears, they got, uh, like, uh, crossbows and stuff, like, little crossbows, like, they got movie replica stuff. Like, where's the part with the movie replica stuff? And it's very easy to find. Just go on themediaspeaks.com and click on the link that helps support us. And, uh, yeah, I'm we're usually not... i knives from them before, yeah. I've we're bought. not usually whoring out for money, but you know, uh, but this we'd is appreciate cool if you help that our sponsors. Yeah. I'm not even joking. Before these guys were our sponsor and before they were an affiliate of ours, um, I'd ordered from Bud K's at least like five or six times. I've ordered throwing knives. I've ordered regular knives. Um, I've ordered uh, two two stun guns from them. Um, I've ordered a ton of stuff from Bud K's, and everything they send is exactly what they say. It's prompt, quickly shipped, and good quality products. I've been buying from Bud K for about 10 years. Yeah, so. see? It's yeah. like when I saw their name. I just name, got this from them not too long ago. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, what is it? A knife. I can't see. And I, I will oh, okay. say, if, if, if for uh, listeners, if uh -huh. if Matt mentions that something is good for a, a gun or a knife, you just go ahead and take it as pretty much gold. Just yeah. trust me on this. Like if I say it's a good knife, it could be a piece of crap. I'm not gonna lie to you, but <laughs> Matt says it's a good knife. That's a good knife. <laughs> I appreciate the confidence, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Which I still have to do. I have to find some paracord, and I am going to do a video where I try and make a net, and then I think I'm going to try and fish with it as well. We've been talking about this, me and Matt. That's something I am going to do. I'm going <laughs> to get some. You're going to drop yourself in the middle of the wild and, and survive, Kyle? Are we going to have one of those episodes? Yeah, it's going to be one of those episodes. I'm going to get dropped off by a helicopter in the middle of a forest, and I'm going to have to <laughs> fish with the net that I made. See why we need you to shop. You're gonna skydive in. Skydive. You're gonna skydive in like Lord Moncton with a surfboard. And, and, and <laughs> exactly. Reminds no, me of an idea. Bud K's good yeah. company, though. I've, they really are. I, I've got a, a battle axe, a double-headed battle axe over there in the corner that I bought off of them. I've bought many, many knives off them over the years. I've never bought any of their survival stuff. Um, but uh, I've mainly bought knives. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been mainly knives. My kid, who you saw probably sitting here a little bit ago, my oldest boy, um, he has the uh, mini crossbow, the bolt gun. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's got some of that stuff. That at thing home can too. shoot he's through. He's a lot a, like me. It can shoot through a quarter inch of plywood. It's pretty decent. It, I would say. I mean, I've shot it once into a tree when I was when I went to pick him up one time, and it's it was. I mean, they got they. And and I've always kept in mind. I mean, if you pay nine dollars for something, it's a nine dollar piece. Exactly. You know, I mean, it, you, 
I got to be realistic. They're not going to sell you a two hundred dollar sword for fifty bucks. You know. Yeah. And and read the descriptions because they're very very honest. They'll tell you like this is replica. This is not meant for actual use. Or they'll tell you like the quality of things, like the materials used, very very honestly. And then read the reviews too because people will. That's like what most of the reviews say is there will be like one out of ten is somebody saying oh this is a piece of horse crap on something that like you said like a five dollar, uh, like uh. Knife item with like uh, forty eight commander yeah, tactical yeah. survival hammer and like it's like well you get what you pay for like you did buy like a nine dollar knife how great do it it's not going to be something the military uses you know like you bought a nine dollar knife that has a Confederate flag on the side of it that's not that's not a real tool they so they spears. are very honest they have spears well yeah you you get what you pay for it really comes down to it Kyle you really get what you pay for. but like some of the stuff like he's talking well, about that work. little it's a mini cross and they, they actually have an like that mini crossbow dude it's it, it it I saw somebody online in a YouTube video shoot through a quarter inch of plywood from about six feet away and it's like what it's, it's like 20 bucks right it's part of my kid's zombie. Hey, yeah, I got to hit it home for you. This right here. I got right. a uh, article about uh, gun violence ro rocking Chicago as eight are shot in one day. Court, your you internet that? is just dying. I think you wanted me to bring up the article about violence in Chicago. Yeah, eight people got oh. killed in one day. Uh, okay. Violence in Chicago, big shocker. The gun control's working well there. Robert yeah, it works perfectly. An amazing job. A am I am I coming through it all now? Much better. Uh, okay. Yeah, a little better. I'm gonna there, stay Cor. black and white here. Court, how do you feel about violence in Chicago and eight people? Uh, what happened? Dead? They're dead. No, but gun control works, guys. They have the strictest gun control laws of the country, almost. Um, Were they killed with legal guns or illegal guns? And do criminals have guns? And do American citizens also have guns? And, I uh, think, do you think most they have likely guns, the criminals or the citizens. Since the gang violence, a lot of people take guns illegally. So I'm assuming, illegally. but I, I'm not saying I'm not saying I know that. Obviously, look into it, but. It said that the, uh, let's see, I'll read a little bit from the article. It says the level of gun violence in Chicago, which has caused shock, waves nationally. It's continuing with eight people having been shot in the nation's third largest city in a 24-hour period that ended Friday morning, including one that ended with the death of a 15-year-old boy. And I guess... Uh, the, Who was a known the, gang member, the, by the way? was shot several times. That, that article was yeah. in the Sun-Times and the Tribune. A few weeks ago, um, gang member, of course, uh, women okay, and okay. several Court, others. Court, you've been uh, this goes on his... Court, you got to simmer down a little bit. You're totally rubble right now. It's it's beyond uh, imagination. Go ahead, uh, Sam. Jump jump in here. It looks like you got something brewing. I was going to say that the entire time, you know, I think that we were in Chicago. I remember looking around, thinking, "How are you going to?" police all of these people and such. I mean, it's obvious that someone with the intelligence that you would assume Rahm Emanuel, big assumption, you would assume that Rahm Emanuel has, there's no way you can police something like this to where you're going to get dishonest people in a city this size to not have any guns. It's very obvious that what they've done is what... Uh, is what the Second Amendment advocates have been saying forever. They've taken guns and almost um, made a monopoly of it for the people who are dishonest and most dangerous. The people who you least want to have them are the only people that do. And I, I think I think that un that article the court brought up underscores that perfectly. Yeah, and no offense, even in like in in a situation where you're being robbed, even with a knife, I feel like you have the right not only the right but you should be armed with a gun because somebody who's gonna have uh, 
in layman's terms, somebody who's going to have the balls to come up and rob somebody with a knife, like, you may not have the balls to, like, fight back with a knife. Like, most people want it, but you're not the assailant. You shouldn't have to have more balls than the guy attacking you. You should be able to just carry around a little 22, or if you're the Wiz, a Desert Eagle. and <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah. Hey, where's the Wiz? Uh, is this link out there for people to uh, join us, maybe, or... Uh... Obviously, we're joined right now by Matt Winklejohn of ResistTheTyranny.com. And, uh, Thank Matt, you. You're, <laughs> uh, uh, normally, we have to get three people when Court's not here, but, but we got you, and you're the strength of ten men uh, uh, with your knowledge and information, sir. Well, um, you know, and there's something about uh, that whole gun violence in Chicago. Chicago, or not Chicago, but Illinois... House and Senate just passed a concealed carry bill. Now it's up to the governor to sign it. Um, Which you know what I'll say before, uh, oh, yeah. before, and I want to get your opinion on this. I've read from everything I've been reading about the new conceal and carry bill. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with it. I don't think it's perfect, but I'm pretty happy with it considering this is Illinois. I think that it's fairly reasonable, and as somebody who's new to gun ownership. I actually would like to take that fifteen that sixteen hour class at a hundred and fifty dollars. I think that's a reasonable price for something that in the in the private sector would probably cost me more. So and that'll like, go down, court, uh, Kyle. That'll go down. It's gone down in Ohio. You can now get those classes for fifty bucks now that it's been here. Yeah, well, like, I, I took mine for ninety bucks and it was sixteen hours, uh, two eight hour days over the weekend. And uh, you know, they, they it's eight hours of class work. And then um, there's, I think, four or six hours of shooting, and you know, those other couple hours are for testing time, so you so you can actually pass the class. Um, and written, if you have written, if, test, it, written it, test or what type of test? Uh, it's a, test? Well, here in Ohio, and I'm not sure where. I I I don't want to mislead anybody. Very safe to say, it, you know. But here in Ohio, it's an open book test. You get a book from the attorney general that's all the gun laws in Ohio. And uh, you then have an open book test at the end, which even at open book, I got a 98%. <laughs> Matt, that, Matt, that actually sounds a little bit like the DMV. Would you draw a comparison, yeah. and how do you feel about the parallel? Um, when I got my license, um, they were still just laminated pieces of paper. Uh, the the, uh, the driver's license, you mean? Or? Yeah, yeah, my driver's license. Uh -huh. So the, oh, yeah. the testing was a bit different yeah. back then. My first license when I got yeah yeah. Well, hey, can I, I can I like draw the comparison? If if it is like the DMV and that's what it turns into, I really hope it's under control of the Secretary of State because Jesse White is the shit. I have to say that we have the best Secretary of State on the planet. People complain about DMVs and how they take hours and hours. I've never waited longer than like twenty minutes in an Illinois DMV. They move fast as hell. They're prompt. They're quick, easy. What what about the concern that you're going to have to renew your license every so many years, which is the uh, BS, which I still say is double taxation. I heard, I heard in Arizona, like you can keep the same license for like 17 years or something. So like you'll look more than that. I think you used to be able to do that here. You'll, you'll be able to on your license look, uh, you know. 18 or whatever. They used to send you a sticker here that you just put on it. My dad had the same license for literally yeah, like 15 the timeless, years. Yeah, the timeless uh, license there. No, it was uh, like we were on one of my old digital laminate. Like four years. Am I coming left. through it? <laughs> Guys, am I here? Yeah, welcome back, Anthony Court. And uh, you're here just in time because uh, we're, we're reaching the end of an hour here. And on the Saturday programming, we like to keep it quick, snappy, get to the headlines, bust it out, talk about a lot of stuff. And we like to wrap it up by talking about entertainment. Sam, I know, specifically had something that he wanted to talk about in the final 15. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, I don't know if anybody had seen it. It is the, um, the, the space oddity. Most people know it as Major Tom that was recorded in space by one of our astronauts. I guess it might be old news. I just saw it. Uh, a shout out to DJ Doug Superfresh Arnold. He had sent it to me and said that he thought that it was an earth-shattering uh, video, and uh, which is funny because it wasn't on Earth. But it was the first video filmed in outer space, and I thought that that was, 
I was rather impressed. Uh, it's actually sung and his guitar is played. Of course, it wasn't recorded there. And then they dubbed and they synced it up later. And it was really it, worth seeing. I, I was really impressed. Cool. Well, here, give me one second here. I was hoping you would do and that. We're talking about, say we're talking about you couldn't and put you on the spot. We're talking about David Bowie, right? Yes. But the, the astronaut sings awesome. and plays guitar. Uh, All right, cool. Bart, you're familiar with this, and I know you're familiar with uh, Bowie there. Uh, uh, Kyle's bringing it up. Uh, Court, what are your thoughts, real quick, before we uh, before Kyle starts playing? Well, it, it's a classic, classic song. Uh, that's pretty cool that they did that in space. Uh, I bet David Bowie actually probably loved it himself. Could you imagine and, uh, Bowie? Yeah, and not only that is if you check it out, his. Oh, here we go. Control to Major Tom. Lock your Soyuz hatch and put your. That's about all we can play without getting oh, in yeah, trouble. I've heard that yeah. song before. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that guy died, though. Like, I'm probably misleading people entirely, but I think that guy's dead. That's terrible. Which uh, guy? Will somebody, wiki, will somebody wiki that real quick? Send him an email if he's still alive. Invite him uh, on the show. Guys, last night I was watching, uh, we were talking all about politics and governors and mayors and stuff, and last night I was watching this uh, new movie, Broken City, with Russell Crowe and Mark Wahlberg. And, uh, was, it, was it in Chicago? <laughs> uh, no, it was in New York. New York. <laughs> it was totally okay, New York. It's all about New York. I mean, that's the Broken City. And that Russell Crowe plays the mayor, uh, and... Uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones is his wife, and there's all kinds of stuff going down because uh, you don't know who's on the right side and this and that. Uh, Mark Wahlberg's a private eye. He's a detective, and uh, he's kind of trying to Batman his way to the city, and he's working with the police commissioner. And I don't want to give anything more away than just the uh, characters. Oh, the guy that plays the com uh, police commissioner. Uh, Gordon. Basquiat. Damn. Uh, what's that guy's name? Paul Wright? Something know. like that. It's like a light-skinned black guy with a cool black mustache. He played uh, Boss Quiat in that movie. Anyways, it doesn't matter. He's a great actor. Uh, check out that movie, Broken City. I thought it was really wait. good. Matt uh, Winklejohn. Wait, wait, wait. I have a question before you continue. Matt Winklejohn, did you like the movie Sniper? Oh, the with movie Mark Wahlberg. Sniper. Yeah, yeah, yeah Mark we're talking Wahlberg. about Mark Wahlberg. The Tom Berenger? That... I don't remember a Mark Wahlberg sniper movie. I remember a Tom what? Berenger. Oh no, dude. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, the one with the guy from no, Eddie, the shooter, Eddie and the Cruisers. Shooter. Shooter. Yeah, shooter, 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 shooter. Oh yeah, shooter. I did like yeah, shooter. Sniper is the shooter, one yeah. with the yeah. word man from Eddie and the Cruisers. You're right. And then yeah, Tom yeah, I like I like that one. I like yeah, shooter. that was a good I one. That guy a lot. Yeah. But yeah, shooter. Have you seen that flick? Yeah, I did. I, I liked it. Yeah. The end when he's like, "Do you trust me?" And he's like, "Yes, I do." And he shoots. He's like, "The firing pin was never in the gun." It's like, "Oh shit!" Spoilers for like a the one where movie. Tom Berenger's a school teacher. That one's kick ass. What's that? Oh, one? the substitute. Yeah, that one's a good one. What? Yeah, all the sequels were a garbage, but the awesome. first one the first, was only the good one. Yeah, yeah, the first one's the only good one. Uh, speaking of sequels, I just watched uh, not too long ago. I think, well, actually, last night um, was the "Today's a Good Day to Die Hard." The 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 oh, latest the new die, hard? die Hard. Yeah. Oh, I want to see that. That was. Wait, I liked the, it. I never watched newest? "Live Free or Die Hard" yet. Oh, that one's good. Court, you gotta watch that. Oh, don't tell me anything. I'm. Don't tell no, me just, anything about that. You Cole, like the new it. Die Hard? I didn't like it at all. I. Dude, I this one where all of a sudden he's got a family or something, right? He's got a son. Uh, yeah, all of a sudden he's got this son that we never heard of, and like, I'm sorry, but it's like spoilers, super, super spoilers. Okay. No, 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 What the <laughs> fuck is John McClane doing in Russia? It you doesn't make uh, any you sense. Apparently, oh, Russia. You oh, apparently on, didn't pay no, attention to the first Die Hards. I did. I, I All right, stop spoiling son. shit for court. Okay, come on. I thought we had an agreement at Entertainment Hour that spoilers would be minimal, right? I mean, come on. That that wasn't. That's not a big thing. That's like yeah. you can you can know that from the trailer. It takes. Oh, it's just the oh, ending yeah, of the yeah, movie. Yeah. No. 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 no, no, no. <laughs> it's just, it takes place in Russia. Oh, it's just the ending. Uh, <laughs> Sam, <laughs> Sam, what what else have you seen recently? Like, what kind of movies or music uh, do you want to uh, pump up that? Uh, it's funny. Lately. 
I, uh, I I tend to use my computer as my TV. I don't have cable or anything. Right. I yeah. will say uh, everyone knows. I, I like everyone. I'm sure not half the people listening to this love Twilight Zone. Well, if you go online and go on YouTube a lot or whatever, uh, you I'm sure you've probably found um, uh, uh, Tales of the Unexpected. Which is a really good English uh, story uh, storylines along the lines of Twilight Zone. Well, there was also something called Way Out TV, a way out, way way out. Just type in Way Out episodes, and it is what the guy that did Tales from the Unexpected did back in during black and white TV era. It is yeah. it's very very good, and I, I had not heard of. Way out episodes. So, uh, yeah. for those of you that might like older, creepier, more noir looking uh, TV, yeah, it's noir. excellent. Yeah, it's excellent. crazy. Uh, I have this, uh, I had this for like a couple of years and it was still in the package brand new, but I don't know. I was shopping one day and buying a bunch of crap. You know, I had a bunch of money or whatever. I was just blowing <laughs> it. And I bought this like uh, eight hour Alfred Hitchcock uh, special thing, and it's just been sitting in the wrapper amongst my DVD collection for the longest time. But I watched the new movie Hitchcock with uh, Anthony Hopkins. I didn't know about it. Dude, and my that roommate older, did the uh, same actress thing. But... lady that's really good. I, I can't think of her name, but uh, she's real. Oh. Mirren something or she's really awesome. My roommate uh, did the movie. exact same thing with a Stanley Kubrick collection that was like a hundred and eighty dollars, and he yeah, bought it. And my like favorite never. director. But then something new comes out and reminds you about that. And I was watching some old school like black and white and like silent films started coming up. I'm like, what the hell is this? I'll tell you what, D. Like so whatever you do, universe. watch the movie Blackmail. If that that's my favorite Hitchcock movie. Oh that. yeah, I think that's on there. Excellent. You, you guys, Excellent. I'm going to watch it. You guys know the movie 28 Days Later, right? Hell yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Okay. Well, how long ago did that come out? Uh, I'm going to guess that that 12, was 15. 2003. Okay. Am I right? Am I right? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know Something if you're like right. Something like that. 10 years but, ago? Uh, yeah, okay. I think a little, bit, a little bit newer. It's like I, 2004. I don't know what year it came out, but it has been in my DVD collection, in the wrapper, until this winter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was frozen in time like Captain America, right? No, you want to hear something really Austin, funny? Austin Powers. My sister, right, she really likes the Lost Boys, and so when the new one came out, like, the Lost Boys 2, pretty oh, much, and, sucked. like, yeah, but yeah, I got I it for, I got it for, for, like, Christmas on DVD, and then, like, last Christmas, my mom gave it back to me unwrapped, which <laughs> she found it in my sister's room and didn't know it was from me and regifted it back to me. But, oh, like, no. now it's sitting <laughs> on my shelf still. Did you tell her? The, no, the, I didn't. I'm just like, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I just let her, I just let her have what, it. What she just have? found out if she's watching. Well, what's good, Sam? Uh, the, only, I, I, the only good thing about that movie, and I, I confess to only saying part of it, was the uh, the they got the McMahon. I think it was named Greg something McMahon, the guy that did the original "Thou Shall Not Kill." They updated the song, but have him doing it. Are you talking about the song from The Lost Boys? It's the only oh, good, the show. Only, oh, the only good yeah. thing is one song on the soundtrack. The, yeah, the, that, the, that the, makes the for a great movie. They did an excellent job with. It's the no. only thing. Dude, that song yeah. is so cheesy. That's, that's probably terrible too. Look, uh, there's no way they should have remade that, but and the only reason that they did is because vampire movies were like super hot. Comic book I movies are super like hot right now. Online. I think I've already said it once before, but I'm going to say it once again. Wesley Snipes is apparently out of federal prison and needs to make a new Blade movie immediately. How do you guys feel about that? What was he uh, I, I feel great. I know. Oh, tax evasion. Tax, tax evasion. Yeah, taxes. <laughs> Pray, uh, yeah, he, 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 he was into the whole uh, IRS... IRS abolishment. Doesn't he? I'd like to see Blade like reincarnated with Don Cheadle. No, no I want to see. They get rid no, of out of here. Wesley's no, gotta... they should. Dude, Wesley's Kung Fu is so much. <laughs> they should bring Wesley Snipes on The Walking Dead as a character, man. He would just kill everyone. Oh, yeah. As long as they don't have the video game and destruction of the vampires again. That guy, that guy from uh, hold, hold on, right there, Court. That guy. This is like a game. That guy on The Walking Dead. From the Boondock Saints, that actor. Yeah, he yeah. Blade three, with with. Oh, uh, okay. Types. And he oh, I forgot him. about that. And then oh, Blade had to deal with him. Dude, what if they More made Blade. a? What if they More made Blade. a? More Blade. More Wesley Snipes. 
What if they what made the- <laughs> Demolition Man 2 where they're like, after all that shit, we oh. re-throw Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> and- <laughs> that, hey, I think, I think Wesley, now that, actually, now that Wesley's out of prison, I think... Simon already, Phoenix! Wesley Snipes signed <laughs> up for Expendables 3. He's in Expendables 3. Wesley Simon Snipes. Phoenix is back! <laughs> Simon Phoenix is back because for some reason we froze him again! Okay. <laughs> and now he wasn't incinerated in the end. No, he's they put it back with together. John Travolta like, and the Red Skull. Uh, well, well, what have you watched most recently, Matt? As far as entertainment, I know it seems like you're really busy on the website and just like pumping up the new site. But I mean, have you had a chance to kick back and and what have you watched recently? That actually, the last thing I watched is probably. Uh, that uh, today's a good day to die hard. Now, I do have yeah, a yeah. movie called Dark Circles um, sitting in my DVD player right now uh, waiting Dark to be Circles. watched. What's that? It's a, it's a horror flick I ran across, and, and I was uh, downloading torrents illegally. And um, <laughs> You mean legally? I was, or, or, or legally. <laughs> um, if you and, can click on it, don't you think that's legal? If you're yeah, able to uh, click on something. Hey, it didn't tell me that it, it didn't that tell you. Owner. It's their fault that you can click on it. If not you put right. something illegal on your website, no, but I can't Ignorance of the law you. isn't an excuse, remember? They always say that in traffic court. Ah. Uh. Well, I was looking up. Talk. I was looking up movies, Ignorance and I was just going through the, the headlines on this tort site, and uh, ran across dark circles, and and dark so I just circles. YouTubed it and see the to look at the uh, uh, um, preview or the, the 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 commercial for it, and it looked really good. It's a horror flick about something. I'm not sure what, but uh, uh, it looked good. And so about a dark I, I circle. It. No, it's 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 something about the woman. There, she's so scared she can't sleep, and it's. I'm assuming dark circles mean like circles. Are you sure it wasn't called Brown up. Eye? It could have been called. Chocolate, it, it, it could have been called Chocolate Starfish, but it, <laughs> you wish, Kyle. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll suggest the uh, new KMFDM CD, Kunst, K U N S T. That's clever. Now I, I heard the uh, new Rob Zombie CD is good too. Yeah, have you ever seen Donkey Punch? That's a good movie. What did you guys think of his movies? The House of a Thousand Corpses and then The, the Devil's Rejects. The Devil's Rejects is one of my favorite. I like that one better, too. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Are you, are we going to say something, Kyle? No, I just I haven't seen either of them, which, like, not because I have a They're problem. They're good. I, re- hey, but I can admit, they totally rip off che- the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, a lot. But Are you guys a, interested yeah. in seeing the uh, Machete sequel? And uh, is no. Alex Jones going to be going nuts over this? Is... Uh, Robert Williams <laughs> spawning more. Uh, is he creating more uh, race wars and race riots uh, again? This, again I sense this a summer? shirtless, shirtless uh, YouTube. Shirtless rant. <laughs> and, 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 look out! The Young Turks might be watching. Dude, that's like I think I that's have, my I favorite video. I must have missed his YouTube. rant on that. I, I I hope Alex Jones didn't take Machete seriously. Oh yeah, he said it was to machete. like. Uh, he said it was uh, to uh, incite race riots, which I disagree with him on. But I like, forgot what was he saying about Django and Chain, and I don't disagree with him a lot. Because same thing, like race riots, and it's to like says nigger too much. Well, Django separating history. Unchained, I have a problem with, and this is something Alex said, and I completely agree with, and it was when Jamie Foxx was on a talk show. He's a oh, jerk. oh, yeah. yeah. He's a jerk. And he said, he said that, you know, he basically he was a slave, and this is just how he put it. I've never watched the movie, uh, but he said, I freed myself and killed all the white people. How's that? And the whole crowd goes nuts and claps for him, and he starts making fun of killing white people. Now, if hey, white, but but if, but if someone said that, if someone said it, there. yeah. No, no, no. But if a white guy said it about black people, he would be like, uh, in like. <laughs> Defamed and, and, yeah. and like, which blinked. like nobody's saying that like some white guy should go out there and say a similar thing about black people. What we're saying is just like n- neither thing is right. Like neither of those is in any way. Okay. He, he, he could have. It, it was better left unsaid. I, I agree with. Yeah, yeah. like you could have just been like, oh, it was a fun movie to make. <laughs> you know, there are a million. There's a plethora of things you could have said instead of that. Plethora. That plethora. You know what that reminds me of? Remember three, three Amigos guys? Yes. Remember the guy, he goes, a, a plethora. He goes, what is a plethora? 
You get that the the, the head of the infamous. Uh, yeah, what is the what is the plethora? You tell me, and he like cocks the gun and points it at his head. Like, <laughs> you know what foreplay is? Good. Neither does yeah. I have to say though, I'm probably oh, yeah. I might buy one of those guns from uh from uh Django Unchained. Like you can buy like all those guns. They were available before the movie came out. I was looking at them a while ago, but like all those like Civil War era revolvers, like. Those look pretty freaking cool. I think I'm they are cool. Them. They, they, yeah, they are classic. Uh, you, you can like get black, one for like two hundred bucks. Yeah, you can get one for like two hundred bucks too. And like, I don't even think I'd ever like use it. It's just like a cool piece. I'd maybe keep the stuff like packed away somewhere in cotton balls, just in case. <laughs> we have a we have a replica of a Civil War pistol on our wall. I used to have a fifty caliber black pipe black powder rifle. I yeah. I won it in a uh, raffle. Yeah, and. uh um, somebody said something about using it for home defense, and I was like, "Are you serious? You can't be it's serious." A novelty. And they were like, "Why?" They were like, "Well, wow, it's fifty caliber." I said, "Yeah, but if you miss, what do you do? Tell them wait a second while you pour the powder in, put the ball in, pack it all down again. Okay, now keep attacking." Well, hey, you got I five mean, shots. Game right? on! Five shooters, game right? on! Most of game them are five on! shooters, right? Or five and six shooters. You get five shots out of one of them, or no? You had like the single shot pistol. I had a, no, it was a rifle, a, a fifty caliber rifle, black. Oh uh, no, I'm talking about the revolvers. The yeah. revolvers, but even still, it's like you really don't want to keep that packed and loaded for a long period of time. You really want to use it within a few days of like getting it loaded, right? You know what, Matt? Though, if, if you don't know a lot about rifles, and somebody comes at you with a great big huge rifle like that, you might. You, if you're a novice, you might. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Well, yeah, and, and that it was looks the, a lot worse than it is. Uh, you're right, and, and you're actually really right. I mean, because the <laughs> barrel is super heavy on them, and if I missed, I could have clubbed the guy to death. I, I sure. wouldn't have. I wouldn't They're have. Heavy. I just seen that kind of, <laughs> of course, gone. I mean, there's always clubbing someone. That one shot. Well, that one shot would definitely would definitely scare a motherfucker. <laughs> I will be the. <laughs> Media media speaks next week will be uh, reporting on how somebody was shot with a musket. I just know it. <laughs> I heard some uh, some uh, museum curator got got in trouble a few years back for launching one by uh, an old cannon by accident and it hit somebody's house. <laughs> and the guy the guy from Mythbusters, Mythbusters did that too, I think. Hey, uh, do you yeah. guys remember the show Fight Back with David Horowitz? And uh, he used to challenge all the old school TV commercials like back in the early 80s. Oh, like, uh, no. You remember that commercial, the super crazy glue, where the guy uh, guy with the hard hat like glued himself yeah. to the iron it's a bar? It's like Consumer Reports. <laughs> yeah, it was like a Consumer Reports TV show called Fight Back. Cool. And, and they, used the guy to they used to challenge the, the old school TV commercials, and we need more of that. We need a new. Sh we need. We need to bring that show back to to be cynical and and challenge uh, not not only the commercials but also the news reports. Yeah, but like, uh, what as about the alternative those... media? As the media speaks, we need to be challenging and putting to the test all these. Uh, want to be mainstream media folk that go and meet with Eric Holder and the Department of Justice and Media Matters and all these other Think Progress punks. They just cater and bow, and they're just whores and prostitutes that'll do whatever uh, the White House says and kiss ass and and, and not uh, blow any whistles or expose any truth in reality. That's what I think we're doing. And uh, what do you guys say we wrap it up and call it a show? But I mean, we're all really pumping it up, and I think in just the regard that I just said. So I mean, how do you guys feel about that? And I mean, do you think what we're doing here? Do you think us doing a Saturday show? Yeah, at the final fifteen, we talk about entertainment and stuff. But, I mean, it's time to get serious, guys. Let's wrap this up. Let's get serious about the news. All right. Go ahead, yeah, well, Anthony. Well, Go ahead. Sorry I joined in late and had a few problems here today. But, as always, it's a pleasure to meet up and have this conversation every week. And we've been doing it more often. And it may not be with all of us every time. But we're at least out here trying to uh, tell you the news as it comes out and bring up history and recent events uh, that somehow is ancient history when it's only three years ago uh, regarding this current administration and the government and the uh, mili and the NWO and the military industrial complex, and uh, remind you of certain things and uh, to get you get you to read between the in, in, read in between the lines with us. And uh, if you haven't, 
Uh, support our website, themediaspeaks.com. Like us on Facebook. Uh, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, Kyle will give it up in his little wrap-up, I'm sure. I won't, I won't take away from that. And uh, resistantyarity.com is great. Uh, during the week, uh, I, I couldn't keep up with Matt this week. I, I, I was out, you know, out and about, but uh, he, he's been putting out articles, uh, you hey, know, breaking articles. Lousy, so. Oh, can you hear me right now? No, I'm just saying, your, your connection right now is pretty good. Yeah. I, I'm enjoying this wrap-up, but I'm saying normally it's hard to keep up with uh, all uh, Sam and, and Kyle and uh, and everyone else's reports and Matt's reports at Resist Charity just because your internet connection needs needs some... Uh... Oh, well, I, I realize this. Uh, and th Thanks for reminding everybody during my wrap-up. I appreciate it. Yeah, let's, let's uh, do but, it to RoboCourt. Yeah, yeah, anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Car. No, All it's right. okay. Uh, well, I was going to say to subscribe to D Lake, but you can just forget about that now. Um, <laughs> no, no, and I, I, I encourage anybody out there to uh, join us in the conversation, send us news tips, send us articles. You can, I, We feature other sites' articles, so if you have an article that you want to get some clicks, you want to get some recognition, you, want, you have it, specific information you want to get out there, I'd be more than happy to go over it and put it on the site. Uh, so let me know at acourt at themediaspeaks.com. Uh, thank you very much. I'm Anthony Court. All right. Great job, Court. Sorry for razzing you there a little bit. Uh, no, it's all right. You're, you're doing a great job, Court. And uh, I need to see a new Court Report video ASAP. Sam, go ahead. I uh, want to let everybody know, first of all, uh, since uh, most people, I guess, view this on replay, make sure that you uh, do do look at the uh, option of joining us next week. Uh, we meet at 2 p.m. I'm in Ohio, so time being relative. Join us. Uh, hop on. All you need is a webcam and an internet connection. Um, I also want to say make sure you check out the correct views. I try to post often. I think uh, Matt even beats me, but uh, I try to post often. I've got articles going up again now that I'm able to type. Uh, if you followed my show, you know. Now that I'm able to type and everything again. And... Uh, it's nonstop, guys. We do this all the time because this is something that we obviously all believe in. So make sure you check out our videos. Uh, resist the tyranny, of course. Uh, you know what? It was. It's it's, it's going to be like resist the tyranny has to be like a regular Saturday. We we'll just rope him into it. But thanks for listening, everyone, and God bless. All right, so, uh, Matt's getting uh, rodeo lassoed in, into the media speaks here. He, he's on more and more, and we enjoy having him on. Uh, Sam, you are uh, literally rocking there. Oh, yeah. You know what? I, you I'm are rocking. I, I'm going to have to change. Chairs. The Jesse Ventura rock? <laughs> the Jesse Ventura, like, <laughs> you're trolling me. Sam, you're you're telling me. Me. Sam got a new chair. <laughs> so what you're telling me is... $10 at a garage sale for this. I was so happy. Oh, so yeah, then right. why? <laughs> so there's no stopping the rock, and he just keeps on rocking. All right, uh, hey Matt Winkle, John, thanks so much for joining us. Why don't you give us uh, your final closings, your final thoughts on the show, and uh, pump up what's going on with you and uh, resist the tyranny, please. As always, of course, uh, thank you guys for having me on the show. Uh, Kyle sent me the link, and I uh, was happy about that. I needed uh, needed to get away from. I was updating my website and trying to move some stuff around and do some uh, uh, different uh, different things with it. Uh, and that was uh, that was based on on a, uh, some constructive criticism from D Lake over there. Uh, he he made a comment to me, and so I'm going to try that out for a little bit. And uh, anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, uh, check my website out, resisttyranny.com. Um, my YouTube channel, Resist the Tyranny Broadcasting. No more uh, sprues. This is a new new site. You're working with James East. The real deal. Uh, who I'm, who I'm, uh, I'm, I'm liking a lot of stuff that he posts and his uh, comments and criticisms. And I know he's uh, working closely with you guys, uh, with you, Matt, there. You guys are working together. And uh, he seems like a good guy, man. And, uh, yeah, I just want the best for you and your site and a bunch of uh, good, uh, you know, things happening and all that other stuff. And I see a lot of a lot of most of you guys uh, throughout the week. I mean, I've been doing some live shows, and and uh, actually, I probably see the least of uh, Sam, uh, Sam there, uh, uh, as far as that goes. <laughs> well, if, but you're that's up, if you're up anywhere between three and five in the morning, I normally we could do a live show then, right? Live now too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the Sam has a weird is, schedule like me. I, uh, the correct views is live now on. Uh, I, and I do views, watch. Yeah. I do. I watch every one of the correct views episodes, and uh, and uh, good, up, as always, good job. And uh, again, just I'll just wrap it up by saying uh, thanks for having me on the show, and. Uh, uh,
moving on. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right, yeah, man. No, Matt, I was uh, goofing off with the sound effects there, but we love having you on the show. Matt Winklejohn at ResistTyranny.com. Everyone, please check it out. All right, I'm D-Lake for Prez, and uh, Kyle, take us out, man. Wrap this up for the Media Speaks. Go ahead, sir. Yo, TheMediaSpeaks.com, brought to you by primal forces of the universe that are unexplainable and uncomprehendable by the human mind. You can find all our stuff at TheMediaSpeaks.com. David Lake, he's a cyborg sent from the future with the human flesh overcoating on an exo internal skeleton made out of titanium. Bringing you reports constantly. Always here on the live show hosting it for you. David Lake on YouTube. Sam DeGanji, he is the cat in the hat. Those stories, they were real. You can find him by going to the correct views. Find the correct views. He does those live as well, which you can find on the website as they're happening. Anthony Court is a third degree black belt in five different forms of martial arts. Remember that time the earth was destroyed? No, you don't. That's because of Anthony Court. You can find his stuff, Constant Injustice, on YouTube and also on TheMediaSpeaks.com. <clears throat> Matt Winklejohn, Resist the Tyranny, is 500 years old. His cells have a mutation that makes them regenerate indefinitely. He's fought in every great war over the past 500 years. You can find his reports. He knows a lot about guns and everything on ResistTheTyranny.com. I'm Kyle Phillips. The media is here on YouTube. And you can find these live shows at TheMediaSpeaksDOTCom. They don't let us put a period. So it's TheMediaSpeaksDOTCom on YouTube and TheMediaSpeaks.com. That's what's up.